Okay, I am unmuting myself. Let's get Jackie and let's get Melinda to unmute now for a second to make sure that you guys are on the line and do our final equipment test to make sure all the sound is working well. Can you guys do that? Hello, I'm Jackie Miller and I'm here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, Jackie, can you now do a Melinda imitation? That was... <laughs> so, Jackie, have you unmuted yet? Star six. Hee hee Here's Melinda. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if this is how they do it with other groups, but it is 6.30 by my clock, and we're starting now. And I am Dr. Charlie Brown, and I would like to welcome you to our very first Mental Skills Overview webinar. And I am delighted to be joined by two of the smartest, the most talented coaches that I know and they're also two of the sassiest that I know, so they're, they're perfect teams here. We've got Melinda Yelton of Tri Jenkins Coaching and Jackie Miller of Britsit Coaching. And we've got a – I'm just really delighted to be able to you know, launch this webinar series with these two folks. And what we're going to do today – I, we're going to spend a little bit of time with an orientation to the webinar process itself. I wanted to share a little bit about the background, the format, the logistics, and you know, then we're going to do an overview of mental skills training. What's it all about? Well, first of all, why would you want to do mental skills training? What's involved with it? And how do you actually do that? Now, we're not going to have a chance to go into great detail in this overview session, but we are going to offer a few quick tips. Uh, the clinics are where uh, we're going to be offering more detailed you know, tips and tools and suggestions. And we're going to talk about the options for further training, and then we're going to have a chance for question and answers. Now, the most important thing in my agenda is that we enjoy the journey and enjoy the process here. To begin with, I want to give a little bit of the background as to how this came to be. It really is a privilege of working with both Melinda and Jackie in this webinar process where I've had the opportunity and the honor of working with both Melinda and Jackie uh, as athletes, and I've watched them develop and grow in their experience and expertise and reputation and coaches to, to being two of the finest coaches that I know. And last year, I led a mental skills clinic for Trijinx Coaching, which is Melinda's coaching organization. And it was a complete blast. It was very well received. We had a great time, and we had great feedback that it was really helpful. And we had planned a clinic for this year, for 2013. Melinda had a number of athletes who were interested in having uh, another uh, repeat of the mental skills clinic. But I was also approached by Jackie with her wanting mental skills resources for her clients in the Triad Act area. And one of the things that I've really been wanting to do over the past you know, year and as targeted for the future years is to expand to Internet-based groups in order to reach more people. Now, the challenge with doing webinars, though, is how do you maintain personal contact and personal en and engagement and how do you make sure that the information and the techniques that I'm going to be talking about are always, that they can be tailored to the individual? And I think we've come upon a very unique coaching format, a unique webinar format here that integrates the coaches within the training process. And actually, to my knowledge, I don't know that it's been done quite like this before. 
any place that I know. So if we look at the format, I'm the presenter. You know, every webinar has a presenter, but one of the things that is key here is we also have coaches involved. And in, in the diagram, we've got four coaches, but we're going to use two coaches that I, I trust and know dearly and who will give me great feedback, I know, with this process. It's, this is an experimental trial run. Each coach brings their clients to the webinar. Now, during the webinar, the presenter and the coaches have full communication. The, we have open, easy flow of communication back and forth with anything that's going on. They can actually interrupt me anytime they want to, but I'm certain that they will refrain from doing so unless it were an emergency. The clients will submit questions using the Q&A button for the coach to ask the presenter, me in this case. I, we do that for a number of reasons. One, if we have a large group, that conceiv conceivably there could be a, a large number of, in, of clients. We want to be able to regulate that, and we also want to make sure that the coaches are integrally involved in knowing what their clients' needs are and being able to act in their behalf. And so this is a unique format we're going to be trying out. I'm looking for feedback along the way. Um, let's talk a little bit about the logistics of the webinar. First of all, there are three audio options. You can either dial in on a Telebridge line and enter in a PIN number. You also can use the Skype button. Now, I just received a notification from Meeting Burner, which is the platform that hosts the webinar here. It's the, it's, it's the organization that I use. And apparently, Skype has recently done an upgrade that is not compatible with the meeting burner sound system to be able to to uh, be able to speak while using Skype, and so you may want to go ahead and just listen through your computer, uh, or else you will need. If you're using Skype, you may need to backgrade to level 6.0 until Skype either fixes it or they come out with a modification where it's a little bit more compatible. Meeting Burner is working on that. But you've got three audio options. If nothing else, you can listen through your computer sound. You can also be watching this on a computer, on an iPad, or on a smartphone. If a participant has a question, we want you to go and you can submit those questions by going up to the top left-hand corner of your screen, and you'll see a little button there that says Ask a Question. If you click that, a little screen will appear, and you can enter your question or comment for the host. Now, I would like for everybody to try that out right now. Go ahead and enter a question for your coach to go ahead and see and submit it, please. Let's see how that goes. I'm going to see. Oh, yeah, we got questions coming in. This is good. Okay. And the coaches will ask the questions on your behalf. While I'm presenting, they'll be scanning the questions, and we'll also have periodic pauses through the presentation where the coaches can give feedback, they can ask questions, and you will also have the opportunity to give immediate feedback with what's called a temperature bar. If you look at the bar at the bottom of your screen, now if you're on a computer, you're going to see this. Uh, unfortunately, it's not available on the mobile devices, on the pads, or the smartphones. But at the bottom of the screen, you will see a, a, a bar is, goes from one end is cold, the other end is the hot, and there's a circle in the center. It's called a meeting temperature. Now, you can put your cursor over that and move it to one side or the other. If you like something, it goes to the right side where it's hot. If you say, I'm not getting this or I don't like this, move it to the left side. And what's really neat about that as a presenter one of the hardest things is knowing if what I'm saying is making sense to folks. 
And this is a way to get immediate feedback. So can everybody go right now and play with this? And move it around a little bit, see what's going on right there, and then tell me right now, move it to the right. Is it making sense so far? Or if it's not making sense, move it to the left. Okay, sounds good. That is great. Now, the other logistic that we need to cover is that if something happens and if you lose your connection, you can log back on just the same way that you did initially. You probably received an email with a link that said join the meeting. Just go back, click on that email, and you can go right back in. The other thing is that this webinar is being recorded for later viewing where you can review it or if we're ever doing a webinar or we're ever doing a clinic that where uh, you can't make it for some reason, you can always go back and check it out later on. So everybody give me a little bit of feedback now. Are we ready to go ahead and move on? Oh yeah, baby, I'm like, oh, we're ready to move on. Okay. So, well, actually, I have a question before we move on for the coaches. Okay, Jackie, Melinda, anything else you guys would add before I start into the next phase? No, Charlie, sounds good to me. Okay, I, I think we're good. rolling. We're rolling. Then let's roll on then right now. Why mental skills? Why are we doing this in the first place? Well, I want you to think for a second about your best performance ever. Now, this is a real thing. Stop and think about it because if you're a serious triathlete, you know when you felt, feel like you had your best race. Or if you're a runner, what was your best race? What was your best performance ever? And it may not have been your best outcome. You may not have placed the highest but when you felt like you really raced at your best. Okay, got that in mind? Now, what was the difference that made a difference at that event? Think about that. Now, if you want to, you can actually type it in, submit it, and tell your coach what it was. Now, was it hardware or software? I, I tend to think about you know, the hardware is the physical training. It's like what you put in the computer, or was it the software? And this is a concept that Jim Bowman, who used to work with the USOC and worked with USA Swimming, and also works with the Navy SEALs. We talk about you prepare the hardware, but when it comes time to really perform in pressure situations, it tends to be the software and particularly when you can go into what Jim refers to as that software reserve where you dig just a little bit deeper. And if you think about mental skills and the relative importance of mental skills and physical skills, if you look at this graph, this graphs out, if you look at the, the bottom area, it's the level of development where the left-hand side is novice in the right hand side you get more developed you become a true expert if you look at the is this the y-axis here i believe gang it creates the impact performance and at the novice level the physical impact on performance is huge the relative impact the physical impact is huge and the mental impact is relatively small as you're a novice but as your abilities begin to improve, the relative importance tends to change so that when you move to being an expert, most people who are experts will say the difference between their best performances and their worst performances, it was 90% mental. If, if, you're a, if you're a newbie, if you're a novice, and if you haven't really established that physical base, but the thing that happens is someplace in here in the center, everybody starts getting the same general level of physical base and physical abilities. And once you have that solid baseline, 
of athleticism and physical abilities and technique developed, what really makes a difference under pressure is the mental skills. In fact, when you look at what the research that has been done with U.S. Olympic coaches and athletes, back in, after the, uh, the Atlanta Olympics, looking at Nagano and going into Sydney, there was a very intense study as to what really is making the difference between the athletes who are successful and those who fail to meet expectation and surveying the coaches and the athletes about what was important in their training. And one of the questions that was asked of the coaches is, looking back at the games, what would you do differently if you could? The number one answer was more mental training for the Olympics. Looking back, one of the questions for the coaches also was looking back at the games, what coaching action helped performance? The number one answer, mental preparation in sports psychology. And the question for athletes, looking back at the games, what would you do differently if you could? And one of the major, uh, one of the top five answers was more sports psychology and more mental preparation. That's what we're doing here. And when we're talking about mental skills, mental preparation, if you've developed a level of expertise, you already have a certain degree of this. And part of what we want to do, I don't want you to undo anything that's working for you, but we do want to try and make certain that you're aware of the principles that can help you optimize your mental performance and take those principles to individually tailor them to you, your unique talents, your unique situation, so that you can deliver performance under pressure on a consistent basis and also enjoy the journey. Now, how are we doing so far with this? Can we get some feedback on the temperature bar? Okay, we're rolling on this. So our objectives today, I, we want to talk about a framework for integrating mental skills into your ongoing training program and your training process. I also want to identify key mental skills. What the research has shown, these are key skills that help people consistently deliver peak performance. We then want to talk about a couple of tips for immediate practice that you can start implementing. Now, you know, if we could cover all the tips and tools and techniques in a one-hour program, we would. But the truth of the matter, that's what the clinic's all about. And that's where we're going to talk about op options for further training to see if you want to go and participate in the mental skills clinic that's going to be a follow-up to this program. We're then going to have a chance for question and answers. And then, more than anything else, we want to make sure you enjoy the process. Okay, now some myths about mental skills training. First of all, some people say, we can't teach this stuff. And I'm sorry, that's just not true. That's bull hockey. Um, other people say, well, why do we have to do mental skills training? It's a natural byproduct of practice. Uh -uh takes too much time. Nope. And it's only for problem situations. We know that all of those are myths, that they're just, it, like they said in Porgy and Bess, the musical, it ain't necessarily so. Okay, are we ready to go? Move on. How about a little bit of feedback on the feedback bar? Okay, we are rolling now then. What... <laughs> If there's nothing else that you remember from this presentation today, I would like for you to remember what I'm about to tell you right now. I don't care if you do anything else. I don't care if you do the clinic, but I want you to remember this. The secret for success in anything that you do, and I don't care if it's triathlon, track and field, if in your work, 
in your relationships, there are three keys for success. And this is the foundation of all the mental skills work that I do with everybody that I work with, from athletes to performing artists to physicians to executive coaching. First of all, you got to decide, once you decide what you're, going, you're trying to do, what you want to do, you have to identify the critical or the essential elements of the task. You have to know the bare bones, what really is essential for success. Then you have to maintain your attention on the essential, the critical elements. You have to avoid distraction by the non-essential elements. Okay, does that make sense to folks so far? Use that feedback bar. Okay, am I getting... Making sense. And just out of curiosity, do people have any idea? Can you recognize what that picture is, what the photograph is on this slide? It's a gymnast. It's an overhead shot of a gymnast. And uh, I actually love it. It's a gymnast on a balance beam. When you think about what's essential, she's doing a back walk, back walk over on the balance beam, which really is actually, if you put a person on, a, on the floor, and say, I want you to do this back walkover and make sure that your feet and hands and everything stays within this six-inch line that we have drawn on the floor. It's really a pretty easy task, and most gymnasts can do it. And what is essential for doing it on the balance beam is the same thing that's essential for doing it on the floor. But it's amazing how you can get distracted when that balance beam is eight feet in the air. There are distractions. Let's talk about this concept a little bit further. And it's, this is not my concept. This is a concept by a fellow by the name of Bob Nidefer, who is the granddaddy of performance enhancement in my book. Bob was hes a psychologist who back in the 70s, when psychologists were all excited about misery and depression, Bob said, you got this all wrong. We need to be paying attention to when it works. And he started looking at performance back in the 1970s and paying attention to what worked. And he came up which is now, with the model that's now referred to as the Nidifer model of attentional, attentional model of performance. And when Bob was explaining this to me, he, he you know, it pulled me aside. And I had a chance to work with him individually for a weekend, and he said, Charlie, you know, when you're thinking about it, if you want to understand it, take the 100-meter dash. All physical and mental training are actual, actually, they're just strategies to attempting to impact three critical elements for the 100-meter dash. And if you look at the 100-meter dash, if you boil it down, there are three critical elements. Now, I'm going to ask you, as he asked me back 18 years ago, I want you to see if you can guess what those three things are. And for what it's worth, I've gotten 19 correct answers in 18 years, and I did not get it right. But this is a chance to use your, your, your questions or give a little bit of feedback up there, and let's see if you got yeah, I'll let the coaches see if they've got any correct answers on that. Three critical elements. Now, if we were in person, I would have everybody shout out the answers, but we're not going to do that now. If you start boiling it down, the first critical element, at least the first one that I got, is the reaction time and initial acceleration. Now, okay, and that's where lots of times I remember I was saying being relaxed. Well, the reason being relaxed is so important is that it helps your reaction time, that initial acceleration. The second critical element is actually the distance per step. It's your stride. Now, I know a lot of people say speed. Well, if you really break it down to what speed is, or some people will say good form, 
the reason form's important is that if you have good form, you're going to travel just a little bit further with every step than you do than if your form's off just a little bit. And you know, my third guess was focus, but Bob said, nah, focus is a strategy. And focus helps for number three, which is your speed of steps, the cadence, how rapidly you do the turnovers. What happens when you're doing the 100-meter dash, you're coming out of the blocks, you take those little short choppy steps, and then you tend to lengthen your stride out as you're rolling along. And as you lengthen that stride, you tend to slow down your rate of turnover. Now, and everybody knows who the, most, the fastest man in the world right now is Usain Bolt. A lot of people say, well, the reason Usain Bolt is so fast is that he's tall, he's got that long stride length. Well, that's only one part of the formula because there's tall people who are in the NBA who have a stride length that same distance. They, have, they, got, he, they travel that same distance per step. What really makes Bolt fantastic and very, very unique is his rate of turnover is that he's got that long stride length and he turns his legs over the same speed as a guy who's five six would. And so let's look at the feedback now. Does this make can you buy that your physical for the hundred meter dash, physical training, all physical training is really targeted at either improving your reaction time, the initial acceleration, the distance per step, or the speed per step. And all mental training, be it form, be it focus, be it running relaxed, it's there again, it's designed to impact these three critical elements. Okay, give me some feedback on that. Is that making sense to, sense to folks right now? Okay, so so on that thing. We may have to talk about that a little bit for more people, but that's good. Okay. Can you buy the fact that the person who won the gold medal in London was the person that had the best reaction time and in initial acceleration, the best distance per step, and the best speed of steps? Can you buy that? Charlie, this is Melinda. We did have some good guesses out there. Um, uh, there were several people saying focus. Um, it's what it takes, focus on the gun and the start, or just focus. Um, probably the closest one was David Wenzel said, start, run, finish. <laughs> yes, and um, I had one good one from Vicky um, that said, believe, have confidence, and keep your eye on the target. Absolutely. And those are all excellent answers, excellent answers. What... What I, I, how do I say this? You don't want to, you, 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 you will be more effective if you focus, if you always are clear as to what is essential. And you can come up with a lot of different strategies, such as focus, keep your eye on the target. Those are all key strategies to help you be able to have that fastest reaction time have that initial acceleration, the, the stride and cadence. Now, if we go and let's, let's face it, triathlon is a bit more complex. But I would ask you, what are the critical elements for success in triathlon? And what are the non-essential elements that distract you? In fact, let me go back for a second. If you can go back to, let's go to this slide here again. If you can buy that this is what's essential, think about the non-essential distractions. Who's in the lane beside you? What you did last race? What happens if you win this race? What happens if you lose this race? I'm sorry. Those are distractions. If they do... If those things do not help you improve your reaction time and initial acceleration, your stride length or your cadence, they are distractions. In fact, even 
there's a phrase that they have in Olympic circles at times. I know that uh, back in the Nago Olympics, uh, the, the, we had a, a, a great skier uh, who's now doing sports psychology consultant in the Olympics before Nagano and I'm blocking on where they were held, she was in the position to be on the podium. And all she had to do is nail the last jump. She went down the last jump, and lo and behold, she fell, and she actually broke her back. The good news, she came back and healed from the back and won the gold in Nagano. But the chatter on the mountains was that she had already started thinking about the Letterman interview. Anything that takes you away from where you need to have your attention, it's going to be a distraction. Now, let's go back to this next slide there. Triathlon is more complicated. There's no doubt about it. But the same question applies, what really are the critical elements for success in your sport, and what are the non-essential, non-essential elements that distract you? And this is a good chance for you to go and give a little bit of feedback to your coaches also. Just submit some of the questions there if you think about what's essential. And actually, what's essential, maybe it's probably going to be different at the different phases of the race. That's what makes triathlon so interesting and in, uh, one reason I love to work with it. What's essential on the swim may not be the same as what's essential on the bike. And it may not be the same as what's essential on the run and may not be the same as to what's essential during the transitions. Good. So, coaches, Got another question. Do you want to get some feedback right now as to some of the things that you're hearing from your folks? Or maybe you don't. <laughs> Charlie, yes, I do. Yeah. Great point again from Vicky here. Um, a non essential distraction watching your competition. Oh, we, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Nancy yeah. brings up the point. Uh, just like they tell teams to not look ahead to the next opponent. Yep, yep. It's like uh, the, uh, you, you have to focus in the moment. That's if uh, you have to steer within your headlights. The, Terry Orlick, the sports psychologist, who has a phrase that I, I love, he talks about high performance is like flying a jet. If you're looking at anything other than what's right in front of you, odds are you're going to be dog meat. And you can go back and figure out what's behind you later on or what's further ahead, but you've got to watch what's right in front of you. Melinda, you got anything to add to that? Um, what, one of Kenny Conti throws in that it's essential for him to be relaxed in the yeah. in it. So. Um, I think during these uh, sessions, you're going to teach us how to be more relaxed. Absolutely, and that's a good, that's a really good lead-in that I, I, it's, I, I couldn't ask for a straight man for a better lead-in for this next phase. And, and let's, let's rally on then. Is there anything else we need to touch base on at this stage? No, not for me. Okay, we're good to go then. Then the tip here is always focus on your target. Know where you want to be placing your attention. And if you look at this little guy here, anytime you have this coach up there, that usually means pay attention. This is going to be a tip that is going to have a big applied focus. I actually love this photograph because in soccer, there are always obstacles. There are always defenders. There are always goalies. The key is being able to see the open net. One reason the goalie wears different color, brightly colored outfits, the goalie's trying to get you to pay attention to him. So you can, if you pay attention to him, you're more likely to hit the ball to him. You want to be focusing on the target, what you want to be doing. 
to me, there's. I learned that lesson the hard way when I first started cycling. I don't know how many of you ever had the experience. You're riding down the road, and you see a rock ahead in the road, and you say, oops, don't hit that rock. And I'm looking at the rock, and I can't, I think, I bet I had at least three flats where I ran right smack dab over that rock. You're looking at it. The rock is not the target. What you want to do if you see the rock is say, okay, the path goes around the rock, circle around the rock. Always focus on the target instead of the obstacle. And that's something, hopefully, you can go and play with that this week. And let's take Kenny's question and segue on to what we know about the key skills that have been identified in research that are integrated in all Olympic training programs for peak performance. And I like to group these under three categories. The first group are the target skills. You want to know where are you trying to place your attention and focus because we really are talking about focus, concentration, and attention. And targeting skills includes goal setting. And when I'm talking about goal setting, I'm not talking about I want to win this race, I want to win my age group, I want to qualify for nationals, I want to go to worlds, whatever that. Those are really good goals that are important for your long-range planning, for your motivation, for tracking whether or not you're making progress in your career. But if you're focusing on those kind of goals in the middle of a race, I'm sorry, but I, that tends to be a distraction. You want to know where do you want your attention at that moment in time, and that's what I think of as being your goal. Where, what do you want to be focused on at the start of the swim? What do you want to be focused on during the swim? What do you want to be while you're, you know, when you're coming out through the transition, when you're going through T1 on the bike, where's your focus, your attention? You want to have a clear target of knowing this is where I want my attention to be. And you then want to have a well-developed performance plan for where you have your attention at different phases of the event. And I'm going to, uh, typically when I work with folks, I focus on the goals that you want to be doing individually at certain stages, but your performance plan, that's something you work with with your coaches. Uh, I've been fortunate to work with some of the top coaches actually you know, in the region and in the world, and I would never begin to say, oh, this is what you need to be doing at this stage. It's something that your performance plan should be done in collaboration with your coach, and one of the neat things about this format is that we'll be able to make sure your coaches are collaborating to include the mental skills portion of that, but targeting skills. You want to know where does my attention need to go? Then we want to say, okay, I know where I want my, I know what my target is, but I'm off target. How do I get back on target? And there's, those are the adjustment skills. And with the adjustment skills, the first one I think of is, we refer to as activation management. And Activation management may sound sort of hoity-toity, but it really has to do with what's your energy level. And some people need to be really chilled. Some people need to be really relaxed. Other people need to be really pumped up. But what's that level of energy, that level of activation where you do your best? And how do you change that? If we back up to the goal setting, one of the goals that I always like to have people identify is what is your ideal performance state? What's the emotional recipe that you have when you perform your best? Your ideal performance state, you don't have just one emotion. It's a combination of emotions. And if you know how you want to feel, it will include a level of you know, how relaxed are you, how excited are you. I know some people happen to perform really well when they're a little bit ticked off. But 
learning how to control your adrenaline, learning how to chill if you need to, and learning how to pump yourself up if you need to. The second active adjustment skill is attention and thought management. And it's not just thought management. You know, what I consider to be the rookie sports psychology mistake is some people say, oh, you deal with your sports psychologist, you help people to think positively. Well, that's secondarily. What I really help people do is pay attention to where they're paying attention. And lots of times, if you've ever experienced being in the zone and if you've ever experienced where you're really having a great race, you're not thinking. You're totally focused on performing and thinking, which is this left brain, this inner dialogue, chatter that goes on. You may not even be thinking. And so we talk about how do you manage your attention to put your attention on target? What are techniques for managing thinking to make sure you don't start engaging in, in stinking thinking. Thought management and self-talk is usually most important and most critical in the stages where you have to think, which is the anticipation and preparation for performance. When you're actually performing, uh, you don't want really to deal with heavy analysis in the middle of performing. You want to perform. The, okay, and the third adjustment skill is imagery, is mental rehearsal. A lot of people think of imagery as being, oh, you mean visualization? Yeah, visualization is one dimension, but imagery actually goes beyond just visualization. Powerful imagery includes all your senses. It includes a sense of, of touch, smell, uh, the kinesthetic sense, not just the visual aspects of that. And so those, anytime you're off target, usually you're going to get back on target by either using, changing your activation level, changing your attention, changing your thinking, or sometimes using imagery, mental rehearsal, to, or imagery to help you get back on target more. And then the third set of skills Sometimes people say, I know where I want to be. I know what I, want, what I want to be feeling, where I want my attention to be. And actually, I know how to pull it back on target pretty much. But man, I don't realize that I'm off target until I am just way off in the woods. And that's when we talk about navigational skills. And that's coming up with well-developed coping strategies for those situations where you tend to lose focus. And planning in advance, how do you get back on track? How do you regain your focus? And how do you deal with your pre-performance mental preparation plan? Lots of times people say, well, I do really well if the first part of the race goes well. Well, guess what? The person who eventually moves up in ability and performance, they're going to figure out how to do well as soon as the gun or the horn goes off. And you want to be mentally ready to go at that. Just like you're warmed up ready to go, you want to be mentally ready to go at that beginning part of the, of the race. These skills have been proven through research. They're part of, of all the programs, mental skills programs that are used, not only with the USOC, but also the Australian Institute of Sports. Okay, we're going to go into them in a great detail in the in the, the clinic. Does that make sense right now? Give me a little bit of feedback on that. It's an overview deal. Okay, good. And let's talk about one quick tip here. One of the simplest tips for maintaining attention and focus is what we call hello, goodbye. And first of all, if you know where your attention needs to be, let's say during the swim, you say, I want to just work on being relaxed, catch big water, catch big water, have a clear target. If you find that you're off target, you don't have to deal with an elaborate, oh my gosh, self-talk. It's just, if you're distracted, hello, I'm off target, goodbye, and put it back on target. Just redirect your attention. That's one of the simplest things that you can do to play with, and I would encourage your coaches to play with that 
with you at any time during this next week or so. Any time you find that mm, it's not going the way I want to be, I, I'm not I'm not performing the way I want to perform right now. What's your target? Okay, hello, goodbye. Get back on target as soon as possible. You don't have to do anything much more elaborate than that. Okay, uh, touch base with the coaches now for a second, if we can. We've talked about the the the, the tools. And I'm getting ready to move on to the way that you make these tools habits. The only way I know to get better at anything is you got to practice it. And, and the curse of high intelligence, and I know we got a lot of bright people on this call right now because triathletes are smart. They're very, very bright. The curse of high intelligence is, oh, I have this insight, and I'll remember it under pressure. And what I really want you to do is realize you got to practice this to make it real. Coaches, you got any feedback before we move to this next phase? Um, This is Melinda. I had uh, in your essentials when you were talking about the techniques, uh, Dominique Black said, how do we figure out what energy level we work best at? And I believe that's a, that's going to you're going to cover that in the series. We do cover that in the series, and that really is something. It's one of the hardest things when you first start racing. You may not, you, know, you you don't. You're trying to figure out what works for me. And part of what we do is that we're going to ask you to go back and look at your best races, and. What was going on, and we actually, if you want to, there actually are some instruments you can take that help refine that. But think, you know, you learn from your mistakes. You learn from, you learn from your successes. My granddaddy said that most people in the world that got the world back asswards, they, you know, they spend all the time looking at when things blew up and didn't work right. You learn more from the one time you got it right than you did from the 99 times that it messed up. And so what you want to do is go back and take inventory. of This is when I I really did, I was was cooking, I was in the groove on this. And we'll be talking about that more in the clinic. Great question, Dominique. Any other questions before we move on? Jackie? Yeah, I'm here. I've just brought. I've just seen one. Um, Nancy's saying that um, this is a thing they can teach in yoga. If you get distracted, she's found that um, you acknowledge it and then you let it go. So in the application of yoga with the body and the mind, this uh, this is uh, another. This is something she's found. Absolutely, absolutely. I do Tai Chi, and a good Tai Chi session lasts 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. Some people say, oh, man, that's great. You can go and you you can focus your attention for 20 minutes, and absolutely not. I'm constantly losing my attention, but letting it go and bring the focus back. I always say the key is you gotta you got to claim it, name it, and then tame it. And one of the simplest ways to tame it is just hello, goodbye, bring it back. And yoga is a wonderful example, great example there, Nancy. Any other questions before we roll on? We're rolling then. So how to make this a habit, and it brings us up where to now. And this is what the Mental Skills Clinic is all about. We're going to be offering a bi-weekly online webinar sessions. We're going to be meeting on Monday evenings from 6.30 to 7.30, much in this same format. And you're going to be expected to work between sessions with your coach on implementing the tools and the techniques. And we're also going to have a, a private wiki. It's an online workspace similar to what they do for university courses where it will have handouts, worksheets, and interactive feedbacks where we want to include and make sure that that personal touch and that that interactive power of the community knowledge and interactive feedback is there and is available. We're going to start meeting on April 1st, and the idea is to meet every two weeks. Now, 
Yeah, we are planning on meeting on Easter Monday, which is April 29th. The one exception, though, is um, May 29th. We're going to meet though on Wednesday, the week of May 29th. May 27th, that Monday, is Memorial Day. And our assumptions were that on Easter weekend, usually Easter weekend, people get back by uh, Monday evening. And on Memorial Day, sometimes I don't get back to the following day. But that's our schedule we've got set up. If anything happens and if you can't make the schedule, then everything is taped so you can review it. The logistics for the series is the cost is, this is actually introductory cost because you guys are guinea pig ticks. We've never done this before quite like this. It's $125 for the six session clinic. You register online. Payment is by the PayPal services. And if the PayPal monitors that, you actually can pay with a PayPal account if you have it, or you can pay by a credit card using the PayPal services. Uh, and just for, for information, I'm curious. Some people have already registered, and I'd like to see a little bit of feedback. How has that the PayPal registration process been so far? Oh, we got good feedback on that. Yeah. The one thing, if you've never used PayPal before, if you want to use their services, you do have to be sure you do the follow-up verification. You'll enter your information for the payment. Then PayPal is going to send you another uh, an email to verify that you're legitimate to make sure. I think it has something to do with Homeland Security, actually. So make sure you do that. Um, once you go this, this next week, for those who are registered, I'll be sending out information for accessing the wiki. And the wiki will have a special site for each, for BritFit and a special site for TriJinx. And there actually will be a special site, just a coach's corner on that. And with that, I'll be posting all the handouts. Uh, there will be some videos there, video links. There will be some things that I will want you to ideally review before sessions before workshop to get the most out of it. And we're also going to have it where there can be feedback, question and answers, and I'll be weighing in you know, during the, the, the time between the webinars. And in fact, I'll be meeting with the coaches on the alternate weeks that the webinar doesn't meet. So the idea is that you've got yourself an entire team of experts that are behind you to, to help you master the mental game so you can perform at your peak. Now, so the topics we're going to cover in the series include effective goal setting. I've talked a little bit about that before. What's your target? We're going to be talking about centering with rapid relaxation. That's the activation management. We're going to be talking about focus and attention. We're going to talk about some power imagery techniques. Power imagery is almost like self-hypnosis. And then coping with distractions. And finally, rest ready routines. We've got those topics that we'll cover. If you want to join the clinic, if you want to participate in the clinic, you need to be at least 14 years of age. And that has to do primarily because of cognitive skills change between age, right around age 13 and 14. You need to participate or view the overview, and you need to sign up for the entire program. You can't go to just one. I'm sorry on that. You need to be prepared to work on assignments and techniques between sessions, and you need to provide feedback. Okay. It's, we think we've laid out a good program. It's the first time we've done it. We really do want the feedback. Let's talk about questions right now, get the coaches on. And I've got to let people know right now, we have a thunderstorm coming through Charlotte Graham right now. The wonderful thing about a webinar is that you think, oh, I can do this regardless of the weather. If we happen to get cut off in front, hopefully that won't happen, but just giving you guys fair warning. Coaches, uh, questions and answers. What kind of questions we got right now? Hi, this is Melinda. I had uh, Jeff Howard, my client Jeff, has already signed up for the, the series. And in response to how the PayPal works, he says it's nice and easy. And if they let Jeff through, they'll probably let anybody through. 
<laughs> well, it, okay, I, I, we will not alert Homeland Security. Wait a minute, Ivan can help with that. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Um, I've got a client, Vicky, asking me, can they get a copy of these slides from this evening, and how do they do that? Well, you, can, you can't get a, the, the copy of the slide is not available, but you can get a copy of the webinar. And you can also get a copy of the handouts from this. What I'm going to be doing when you sign up for this, when you sign up, I've got your email address. I'm going to email follow-up information, which means I'm going to email you a link to this whole webinar, to where you can review the webinar again if you would like to. But please don't hand it out to other folks. Uh, I may decide to post it, make it public, but this is going to be your private link. I will also send you a copy of hand, uh, handouts for the overview. We'll send you another fl uh, copy of the flyer on this. And most importantly, I'm going to send you a link for a survey where you can give feedback on the webinar. Um, and part of what, when you sign up, you consent for me doing this, and I promise I will never pass along your email to any other human being or any Robotron or anything else. Mm -hmm. I use it just for the purposes of trying to give you the best services possible. Are you guys comfortable with that? Give me a feedback bar on that. Oh, yeah, great, thanks. Okay, other questions? Um, this is Melinda again. Kenny Conti is asking um, if he misses a session, uh, how does the Q&A work? And I would really encourage all of you to be here for the live session so that you can respond while Charlie's going over it, things think of you, things come to you, and you can ask the question immediately. Because if you're watching it recorded, you cannot participate in the, the, the quick Q&A at the end. But Charlie, tell me if I'm right in that on the wiki site, they could be able to ask you questions and get responses there? Yes, they can. The, the, the wiki site will, be, will have a, a, like a bulletin board, and there's a place where we, rather than sending tons of emails back and forth, we can post information. And the other thing is that if you have a question, I'm going to suggest ask your coaches along the way. Post it there, and we'll have a general post it. Ask Dr. Charlie, and I'll, I will check in periodically during the week, and I'll respond and give, ans give answers to the best of my ability. And uh, we've got the idea is that we want to be as available and make this as personal and as interactive as possible while still allowing the convenience of a webinar. I mean, you guys can be sitting there in your running shorts and stretching while you're doing this. So did that answer the question? Crystal clear to me. Sounds good. Okay. Jackie, how about from your end? You got anything? Uh, good feedback. Nice presentation. Uh, somebody who hadn't signed up and is listening tonight is in. Um, and she was a little confused about the cost. Um, but I think that's been clarified. There's no other cost apart from the cost of her phone, and the, the sign-up, the $125 um, cost for all six webinars. So that, that's pretty clear. Yep. That's, 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 that is it. Uh, if, if you have a cell phone with big cut, with, if, if your phone system, you can either do a landline, you can back up and use Skype, but you can also just listen in on your computer. Uh, you can hear the sound and do Q and A on computer, and not even have to do the phones, you know, the, the phone line. The, you know, the, now the coaches and I have to do the phone line since we're doing the talking. But as a participant, if you want to save the the, the minutes on your phone, just listen, choose the option to listen on your computer, and you should be able to do that with no difficulty and no charges. Great question. Great question. And the other thing I would say is remember, if to, to maximize the, the process, you can, I, I encourage you to use your computer whenever possible because you can use the feedback bar. If you're not, a, if a, you know, where you can use your computer, you can still listen and submit questions 
using by downloading the Meeting Burner app for an iPad, iPhone, or an Android, but you will not be able to provide feedback on the feedback bar. Good questions. Any more? Um, let me just throw out one. Uh, Sarah has a good point about the logistics, the timing. As much as Jackie and Charlie and I looked at this, we, we still got one of the dates um, just confused. But Easter is next weekend, March 31st. So the very first clinic, April 1st, is the one that's on Easter Monday. Was that, did Sarah catch that? Can you, Charlie, can you go back and put up the dates on that slide? I will put it up. I will. Did Sarah catch that? She won the prize. That yeah. is the yeah. official. That to see if you're paying attention. And she won the prize. Congratulations. So that just to clarify, the dates, the dates that he's showing you right now are correct, but the Easter Monday should be on April 1st. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. That was an April Fool's trick, and I'm so glad that you caught that. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Uh, you guys have been absolutely fantastic. The one thing that – let me go back to where we were. Okay, we're rolling through. Oop. Okay, we talked about the orientation. We did an overview, hopefully, of the how, what, and how. Why? what and how. We got the quick tips, some options. We've had Q&A. And I hope you guys enjoyed the process today. I, it, I like to give people feedback immediately afterwards, but since registration could be a little bit slow in the process, it's going to, I wanted to make sure that I had everybody's names and addresses. And so it will be tomorrow before I will send out the feedback with the handouts. And do please take time to give feedback on the survey monkey that we've got because I am all about peak performance, including my own. And uh, really, if you have any questions, check out headinthegame.net. And I want to thank you. I want to thank the coaches. It's been fantastic. And I look forward to seeing a whole bunch of you in the mental skills clinic that we've got coming up ahead. Um, any questions? Looking forward to it, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys, it's for honor. coming. It's been a great honor and a privilege. Great. Uh, anything else, Jackie and Melinda, or else this is our official sign-off? No, just thanks so much for the opportunity, and I know we're all going to benefit from your wisdom. Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. Thank you, guys, ever so much. And uh, Melinda and Jackie will be in touch, and I hope to see the next, the rest of you guys in two weeks on Easter Monday. Bye. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night.